Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to export our files into different file formats. We can export our files into different file formats by going to the File dropdown and then mousing over Export. Here we have many options. Let's go over the first one. It's called Archive as PDF forward slash A. This is a very special file type for PDFs that essentially allows the PDF to be self-reliant and self-contained, you could say. It basically allows for all fonts to be self-embedded and not linked to font files on your computer. So if you're transferring this PDF to somebody else, they'll be able to read the fonts in your PDF without actually having the font. So it's very useful for very custom fonts. It also doesn't allow for audio and video to be used in the PDF, JavaScript is not allowed, and encryption is also not allowed as well. You can read more about this just by looking it up, but it's a very interesting file format. It is essentially PDF archiving, that's what the A stands for, and you can use it if you want to. For me personally, I like to have more control over my PDFs and allow myself to edit them most of the time, so I don't use PDF A unless I'm basically done using a PDF and or I want to share a PDF with somebody that doesn't necessarily have the same custom fonts and same custom assets that I have in my PDF. So if we click on this, it's essentially going to show itself as this PDF file type right here. And it is similar to the PDF file extension, but it has a star in front of it. So that's how we know that it's the PDF A format. And you can basically save it whenever you're ready. And if you were to do this, we can change the name of the file slightly just so that we don't overwrite the original, although the file extension will allow it to be a separate file. But I'm going to write underscore archived, and then I'm going to click on save right here. And now you'll see what happens when you archive as a PDFA. It's actually going to check and see if certain assets and files are allowed to remain. So you can see here that we actually had a few errors here due to some file attachments. So if we expand this, it looks like this attachment right here of my certification file is not really allowed to be in a PDFA. I also had another attachment of my essential syllabus and that has actually been removed completely. And then we can see that there's many other things that have been deleted. Certain hyperlinks are deleted here. They're not really allowed. And we can basically expand this and see more issues. We even have some font issues right here. There are some embedded fonts, and what happens is it actually will embed fonts for you if they're not embedded already. However, if there is a specific font here, such as this one right here that I must have gotten from some external asset, it actually was not able to embed the font. So you'll definitely want to read this and check and see what happens when you try to archive a PDF, and sometimes you're not really able to archive everything. So you'll definitely want to be prepared to do this properly. And so that's basically what archiving as a PDF A is. I'm just going to click on cancel. I don't really need to do it. I haven't actually done it yet. It's asking me now to save as once more. And it's basically asking me if I'm okay with removing and or changing many assets in my PDF. So I'm just going to click on cancel. We're not going to proceed with it. And let's move on to the next one. Let's go back to file and then export. And let's look at the next five options. And these are very similar to each other, but I am very excited to explain the difference between all of them. So we have the TIFF option, and this is the highest quality image you can get. It basically does not compress or modify the image at all. So photographers love this file type. So you can export your PDF as a TIFF file. It's going to be rather large. It'll be as big as it needs to be in order to maintain all of its quality, and no compression is going to happen. The difference is that there are other file formats that are lossy or lossless. Lossy basically means compressed heavily and lossless means compressed a little bit, but not that much. And we'll go into the two file formats that follow those rules. So I can essentially export the entire PDF into a TIFF and it's gonna maintain all of its quality, just like I said. Let's cancel that for now. And let's go back to file and export. And then we have JPEG and PNG. And you guessed it, these are those two formats, lossy and lossless in order. So JPEG will basically compress an image as much as needed in order to basically get the image to be small enough. However, it will reduce image quality, not so much, but by a good amount. PNG is basically the middle ground between TIFF and JPEG where it is lossless. It's going to compress the file just a bit. It's barely going to reduce the image quality, but it is quite useful in making your image small enough to be sent via email and other file transfer protocol sources. 
but TIFF can definitely be transferred through FTP or file transfer protocols, especially if you don't really have limits on the size of your images there. And like I said, photographers would rather use the TIFF file format, while people who are a bit more layman and they just maybe are taking photos casually will use JPEG or PNG depending on the quality that they want. Now we have GIF or GIF, depending on your pronunciation. And this file format is similar to the other ones. It basically allows you to have images, but the big difference is you can actually combine images into frames, basically, or basically you can make images and each and combine multiple images into one file. As a result, each frame will then play itself in order, and this is how you can make some basic animations. And back in the older days of the internet, these were some really nice ways to make small movies. And the files aren't too large, it's basically just a lot of images built into one. So you can always export into the GIF file format, or GIF file format, <laughs> depends on your pronunciation. And BMP is the last one here. And this one is very simple. It's basically just a lot of pixels into one image. Uh, you can see pixels in JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFF files, but basically BMP are certain sized pixels. And basically you combine them in order to create the image. So the pixels are basically a fixed size for BMP. They can be changed, of course. And you can learn more about all of these file formats by just doing a little bit of research on them. Now, let's move on to the next three in the list. Let's go back to our file dropdown and then export. And let's look at the next three. We have text, RTF, and HTML, which work quite interestingly with PDFs. Now, text is basic text. So any text that's in the document will be converted. And this can be opened in the Notepad app, for example, on our computers. And this works with basically almost any text program. So you can see that the file here is just a text file. I'll overwrite that one. I was doing some tests, of course, to see how all of this would look. And you can see here that all the text just basically appears in our notepad automatically. And we can scroll down and see that any text that was in my files, and I have six pages of uh, files here, is basically detected. So pretty self-explanatory. The next file format is actually very interesting. We'll go to File and Export again, and we have RTF, which stands for Rich Text. Now, this is a little bit more advanced, and this is similar to Microsoft Word, although we'll get into what it's like to export a Word document a bit later. But Rich Text actually has a bit more leeway. We can actually control more things. It detects pictures. It detects the text. We can modify the text, and it opens up in word processing programs such as Microsoft Word. So let's do that one now. We'll save and overwrite my old one. And basically, it's going to process the file and then generate it. And once it does, it'll open up in whichever word processing program is your default one. In my case, that should be Microsoft Word. So now I have six pages, and I do have many images and assets. So the validation process may initially take some time, but that wasn't too bad. I would say it was about 15, 20 seconds or so to get to this step. And there we go. It's automatically opening in Microsoft Word. Let's see how it looks because it can get a little funky and a little fresh. So we'll wait for it to process, as you can see down here. And there it is. Now, from the surface, it actually looks like it basically retains most of the data and it looks pretty accurate. I'm going to use the zoom feature down here to zoom in. Now, Anything that is vector data, so any data that came from a word processing program initially or a CAD program, a BIM program, most of that is retained. Now, there are some image assets and some lines that come out a bit blurry. So we can see here that the clouds didn't really come out accurately. The grid circles here are a bit blurry. But the good news is that any text here is basically detected as vector data. I can then click next to the text here. It's actually detecting that this is font size 7 for the text, which I know it's a lot bigger in Bluebeam Review. But that's OK. But here, I can start changing text. So I'm actually going to change this text right here. Let's just make it 45, for example. And so now it's basically just like I'm in a word processing program. It's actually detecting the markup itself, and it shows grips in it. I can actually expand this. And you can see here that it detects this as a text box. So Word is actually highlighting this option right here. Now, if I click in an empty area of the document, the entire document is essentially considered a drawing or a shape. And then if I click on other parts of it, it's now considered a picture. 
So different aspects of your document will actually be considered as different things in your word processing program, and all of them are slightly different, but this is essentially what rich text does. It tries to retain as many assets as possible that are able to be viewed in your word processing program. So this isn't exactly the best use of my PDF. It actually does work very well with some of the other pages that were actually initially created in Word. So let me just zoom out a little bit so you guys can see that go to 100%. There we go. And this document was actually created in Microsoft Word, and then I converted it into a PDF. So I'm kind of converting it back. And so this does work. The, the assets here can be changed. So if I want to change credit into debit, I can do that. So I can basically get rid of these letters here, DEB, and it understands that this is Arial, font size 14, and it's bold. And this is an easier example because this initially did come from Microsoft Word and then I convert it to a PDF. So now we're just reverse engineering the process, which I do not recommend. You may lose certain assets, but in this case, it actually works quite well. So, and then the image here is actually working well. I place this on the PDF afterwards. That's looking nice. And yeah, we can see how rich text works. Let's actually close out of this and I'm not gonna save this for now. Let's now go to the last option file and export is here and we have html now you're going to notice something very interesting when i click on this you'll see that the file extension is actually quite odd it says htm at the end i did some research on this and i learned that back in the day the extensions were not allowed to have more than three letters and so htm and html are actually the exact same thing. The difference is in how the extension is actually viewed and typed, but they will provide essentially the same result. Now, this of course is turning your file into a web page, which is pretty neat. So you can try and convert your PDFs into a web page immediately. Now, you'll see what happens when we do it on, on my end. Let's let it validate and process all the data, especially on the first page of my PDF. It's a bit heavy with tons and tons of markups of different kinds and there's captures in there and different assets and you'll see what happens it uh is not going to transfer everything uh, as we think <laughs> it'll try to transfer some things but floating markups and floating assets don't tend to work very well when we do this so it opened up my other monitor let me drag it over here initially we don't really see anything it looks like a blank screen we can see that there are some assets here on the left side let's scroll down and then see what happens and so here, the second page of my PDF set is the same floor plan without any markups. And that one actually translated relatively well, but you can see that all the text, there's actually supposed to be text in all of these rooms here, all the text is gone. And so it tries to look for objects and lines and it tries to basically convert them into the HTML or HTM format. And some text, <laughs> uh, actually all the text is actually been scrunched and kind of moved into its own page here. So there's all the meeting rooms, there's all that office text. So I do take it back. It's not like the text was removed. It was kind of moved <laughs> and it was shoved down here into this odd little list format here. Um, now, as I keep scrolling down, you'll see that there are some pages that actually did translate themselves relatively well. If I keep going down here, for example, we can see that my certificate here, <laughs> it moved the text out of the certificate picture and then it placed it all down here. So this Blue Beam Certified Instructor text should be up here, the DDS CAD logo, and some of the uh, other assets should be here. If I scroll to the right side here, we can see, you know, this is the address that's supposed to be in my certificate. So no limits is a little text that Bluebeam put on the certificate. So <laughs> it looks like this is uh, not really translating as intended, but there are some PDFs that will translate relatively well into the HTML format. And you'll have to uh, test that with your own PDFs. So let's move on to the next file formats. And now we're ready for the moment of truth, three file formats that we're very familiar with in modern days. And the last three in this list are those three. We have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So we can export our files directly into Word. It could be just a portion of the file by using page region, or we can just do the entire document. Why don't we do a page region and see what happens? Now I'm going to get a significant portion so that we can get a nice variable size. We can get all different kinds of assets here. Let's just do this nice center section with the stairs. So we'll do that. It's going to ask us to save it. I'm just going to put underscore page region and then we'll click on save and let's see how it opens up in Word. I'm also choosing to do this so that the processing and validation process goes a bit faster. 
Although, based on what we're seeing here, it seems to load almost as fast as if I did all six pages, but that wasn't so bad. Now let's see how our assets look in Word. And because it's a bit of a smaller page, not a 42 by 30 page, we should see it all. Ooh, there it is. Wow. Everything actually looks quite accurate in this one. Let me use the zoom in feature to see exactly what happens here. Oh, very nice. So the vector data is detected. It keeps refreshing itself, so it's very crisp and clear constantly. Let me center ourselves right here. Not bad. Uh, you can actually see that the count tool did not get translated properly. The first count in my little blue triangle count tool here went through. But there should be blue triangles on all of the toilets. And it looks like they're all gone. So the count tool doesn't really work with this one. <laughs> but call outs, text boxes, some of the area tools pr work pretty well. And we can see here that even highlights are looking nice. And the vector data itself is maintained. Now, let's see if this text here is actually able to be edited. Let's see if I can get rid of it. Oh, yes, it can. Wow, look at that. I can make those two lowercase e's, for example. Very interesting. Now, what about the text inside the grid lines? Looks like this is all considered one image here, so to speak. And it's all locked. Oh, I could actually move it by clicking and holding and dragging this. So isn't that interesting? So it looks like the assets come in. They come in as separate assets, and Word tries to detect what they are, make some of them images, some of them are text, et cetera, et cetera. So look at that. I can actually edit the text inside of this circle, which is quite nice. So I can make this 702, for example. And there we go. So exporting to Word actually does seem to work, and it works a little bit better than the rich text format. It looks like rich text is meant for other word processing programs. So exporting directly to Word is quite useful. Let's close that, and let's do the next one. So let's go back to File, Export, and we have Excel. So like I, we did earlier, we can do the entire document or a page region. Let's do a page region this time, and I am curious to see if the exact page region is actually going to export the images into Excel. I know I could go to one of my pages with mostly text, and that's going to work pretty well, and I'm actually going to tr probably try that as well. So let's call this one page region one, and this will be for basically a combination of images and text, and then the other one will do mostly text and see if Excel organizes it into its cells properly. So we'll wait for this to validate and load. Very nice. Oh, good. Excel is opening on my other monitor. So after it opens and loads up, I'm going to move it to this one. Just going to wait for that to load. OK, it did load. Ooh, this is pretty cool, guys. Check this out. So now that it loaded, it basically seems to have taken some text and put it into cells according to the order in which the text appears. It's probably going from left to right on the page. And then any text that was actually on the page is basically shoved into those cells while the images themselves are retained. So this is all considered one image. So the arrows, a portion of the count tool, all of that is here. Look at that. Very interesting. And right here, for example, we can see that some text was retained in this odd image. <laughs> it's the portion at the top, which was actually moved below the stairs, even though it should be above it. So it looks like exporting to Excel in this instance is a bit wonky. Let's close this one. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to go to my thumbnails list and let's go to a page with a lot of text. I think that that credit card example page is a good one, but you know what? Let's actually try this one right here. This is an essentials course outline that I made. Now, these are floating markups. These are not flattened to the document. So I wonder how this is going to work in Excel. Let's try it as floating markups, and then we may try it with flattened markups as well to see if there's a big difference. So we'll go export, Excel. I think I'm just going to do page region as well, and I'm just going to try and highlight the entire page without doing too much extra white space. So I think like this, it should be pretty perfect. Let's see what happens. All right. And we'll just go underscore page region two. And we'll click on save. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, there's an internal error. Uh Oh, what happened? Oh, no, looks like that didn't work. Well, let's see if that has to do with that page region that I tried or if it has to do with my file. Uh, or maybe just Bluebeam Review is not able to uh, do it for some reason. Let's try going to File, Export, Excel Workbook, Page Region. We're going to try uh, basically another region. Um, let's see if I can do maybe a region over here. Actually, let's try that credit card authorization page. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to try and do this region, just this bottom portion right here. And let's see if this works. It's all text. So let's see if I can save over. Oh, yes, page region two never generated, so I'll just change it right here. Let's hope it works. It's validating. Okay, this one went through. 
All right, quite interesting. Pa maybe page region has more bugs than uh, just doing the entire document. We may as well try the entire document and see what happens. <laughs> Although it'll be similar to this. Okay, this isn't so bad. It takes our text and it does put it into cells. This text is in, I think, the correct order. Uh, a little bit wonky, like we noticed earlier. This text was actually detected as an image, which is quite interesting. So we have an image in Excel. Um, this text is all text inside of cells, very nice. Uh, this line in particular was detected as some kind of image, so we have lines here. These lines are good to go, this line is not. So certain lines of certain sizes are actually not detected as, um, as, as, as a text, interesting. Now, when I double click on these cells, let's actually double click on the first one. It looks like it puts everything in one cell, very interesting. And it looks like these are, are they underscores? No, they're not. There's something completely different. You can see that I'm creating manual underscores. So I don't know exactly what this is. It's not really an underscore, but it looks very similar. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Well, that's what happens when you try to export to Excel. It depends on what you're doing. So I'm going to close out of that. And our last one, the one that I'm actually very excited to see. We're going to go to File and Export, and we have PowerPoint presentation. Wow. Let's do the entire document. I have a feeling that doing that will have far less bugs, and I'm assuming that each page is going to be its own slide. So let's just save it like that. We'll let it validate and process, and let's see the magic happen right in front of our eyes. This should be very interesting. So my prediction is it'll have each page as a separate uh, slide. I think that everything is going to be retained because PowerPoint works very well with images, with text, and the markups themselves, I wonder if they need to be flattened beforehand or if floating markups will be detected by PowerPoint. It looks like there's actually a lot of data that it needs to try and, and uh, convert. Okay, it looks like it finished processing that. There we go, it's converting saving, PowerPoints opening. Oh, this is so exciting. Wow, look at that. <laughs> we have a couple of oddities here. Let me zoom in with the little zoom tool here. And good, so it does retain vector data. The data is continuously refreshing itself. However, we do have some interesting text issues. Some of the text was actually duplicated on top of each other. This is an image. Now, if I move this, Looks like this text here is flattened and it tries to make a duplicate of certain text and this is now floating text just like any other one. I can actually modify this, right? Let's see if we can do that. Yes, so this is just like making a text box in PowerPoint uh, with data, for example. Very interesting, look at that. Let's zoom out a little bit more. It looks like some of the markups translated quite nicely. We can actually select some of these. So that's another text box. This is an image, so we can move around the areas as images. Very interesting, especially if they're filled in with the fill tool. Let's try this area that's not filled in. Yes, so that works just as well. It's considered just another image, basically. So certain measurements and certain markups will translate like that. Let's go to our second page. I see something here on the bottom right. What is that? Ah, yes, a stamp that I placed a little while ago for testing purposes. So that is the detected as, it looks like it's probably going to be a combination of images and text boxes. So here, this is a text box. I think, yep, it's separate from the entire asset. So each little set of text here is a little bit separate from one another. This stamp here, is that just the border of the stamp? Yes, so the border itself is its own image. Very interesting. And here we go. Yep, we have six slides, just like how I have six pages in my PDF set. Isn't that neat? Let's scroll all the way to the left and inspect the data here. Okay, so my essentials course outline actually translated quite nicely. Look at that. It's all little separate text boxes. Oh, it's beautiful. Very nice. All the images went through. So this does seem to work pretty well, actually, when we convert to PowerPoint. So you can easily convert your PDFs into slides and basically give a slideshow with your own PDFs. Uh-oh, look at Bluebeam down here. It looks like it uh, reshuffled some letters and removed a few. So. That's quite interesting how that worked. Luckily, it's an easy fix. It still detects it as text, so I can basically remove that and type in Bluebeam, just like that. <laughs> that was a good fix. Uh, very interesting, very, very interesting. And then here is our credit card authorization form. This one actually seems to work quite well. Looks like all of our data is here. Now, are these considered underscores? Let's see. Oh, wow, they're, they, it looks like it's all one asset. Oh, interesting. And then here are the real underscores. If I type them in between here, Okay, so these are actually detected as underscores. I just made a few manual ones. 
Oh, I take it back. These, you can see they're a little bit thicker here. So I wonder what is going on here. This may be a certain smart text asset. When you type in certain characters, it actually turns them into s smart lines. A good example of this is when you basically type in um, uh, a certain amount of dashes, it tries to make an entire divider separator line. That happens in Microsoft Word a lot, and PowerPoint and Word do have similar formatting, so very interesting. The underlining down here is thicker, so it looks like it's not perfect, but this can be quite useful. This actually could be extremely useful when we have a clean PDF that has uh, some interesting data. And there it is, ladies and gents. That is how we can export all of our data from our PDFs into so many different file formats. And just to go over them once again, we can archive our PDFs as PDF archives. We have five different image files, all of which have different uses. Then we have different kinds of text, including HTML, which is essentially a web page based text format. And then we have the three at the end that work with Microsoft's Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint. And so there it is. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on how to export your PDFs into many different file formats. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. I hope you have a great rest of your day.